Alright everybody, welcome to part 2 of Entity Framework with SQL 8. Last video we created a database with Entity Framework. We described uh, how the database was going to look with a migration. After we created that, we then created the database table users. Uh, so check out that video if you haven't already. This is a continuation of that. And in this video we're going to add data to our users table from a form in our ASP.NET Core MVC web app. A lot of words I just threw out there, but hopefully this all makes sense. And uh, yeah, here's our database table, users, and our SQLite database using that DB browser. Um, if you're following along, don't forget to install this so you can look at the database because it's pretty helpful. And by the way, link down below is going to be the standing desk that I'm utilizing right now when I'm making this video. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, if you're in the need of a standing desk, go, go check that out. Um, I love this desk, had it for about a year so far and it's great. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a view, and then in this view we're going to have our form. And I'm just going to use a bootstrap form, uh, because bootstrap comes with MVC right, right out of the box. And this is what bootstrap form looks like. It looks a lot better than me trying to style it myself and take the time to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this code for this form. And I'm going to go to views in our solution explorer and go to the home folder. And you can see we already have two already, the privacy and index. I'm just going to add a new one. So we're going to add view. And I'm just going to call this uh, like users, maybe. Or maybe we should call it add users, because I think we're going to read from it and update as well. So maybe add users is the appropriate name. And then I'm just going to leave the rest as it is and hit add. All right, and then I'm just going to take this H1 out of here and paste in that the form. Uh, of course, we're going to have to modify this form that we copied because we have more or different details. They have email, so we can keep that password and a checkbox we're not going to need. So we're going to like fix this um, a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, so let's run it real quick. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next, which isn't building the form yet. I'm actually going to add a button to the top of our web page to get to here. Um, of course, I could just navigate to it up here, but I want to create a button called Add Users. So let's do that real quick. And first, I have to link this view to our controller. So it's in the home folder, so we're going to add it to our home controller. So let's open controllers, go to home controller. And basically, we're just going to create another method here. It's going to be public i action result, or just action result if you want. And then I'm just going to call this uh, add users, because that is what our view name was in the home folder. And then the only thing it's going to do, it's going to, if I can type it, return view. And if you don't know already what it's going to do, since we're in the home controller, it's going to go to views. It's going to look for a folder called home. And then it's going to look for the name of the method uh, that, that view. So now I'm going to go back into views and open up the shared folder and the layout. Because at the top, the whole nav bar, that will go with any view um, because that is like the basic scaffolding and that's what this layout is. It's like the basic stuff. And then the body, which are the different views that we create, will be rendered right here. So they all share the same nav bar. And I'm just going to copy this list item and I'm going to add a new. So it's still going to be home controller, right? Um, but instead of private C, it's going to be uh, add users users plural right yeah and then we can say add users so let's see if this works I'm going to run it again it's gonna build it real quick here it is if we go to add users here's that basic form that we just copied from bootstrap so I'm just gonna have this run uh, in my other screen here and then we can refresh as I make updates to the code just to see it. So let's go back to the add users. I'm going to modify this. I don't know if I'm going to cut this part out and then just come to it at the end because I don't know how time consuming this is going to be uh, and I don't want to waste your time when you can just pause it and see what I've done and I'll explain it afterwards. But Okay, I'm back. Here's what uh, the form looks like that I changed it up to. Of course, we could probably align it a little better and all that, but since this is just a demo, um, I'm not going to take too much time with it. And here is the HTML I came up with. 
So we have our form, and then each form, uh, or each component of the form, I guess, has its own div with the class form group, and then a label. So the first one's email address, uh, the second one is the name, and then the username, because those are the three things we're going to ask for to put into our user table, right? So something else we want to do in our form tag, our opening form tag, so we want to add an action. And this basically says uh, where we're going to send all of this form data. Um, so this is actually going to go to our controller that we haven't quite made yet because this is going to be also a method that we have to add. It's going to be post. It's going to be a post request to our controller. And right now we don't have that set up. But let's go ahead and go back to home controller. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. Uh, however, above it I'm going to put, and let me close or stop running this because it'll give me those because we'll have to recompile. And we're going to put square braces and put HTTP post, meaning that this, whenever this is called, it has to be using HTTP post. And then what it's going to do, it's going to accept as a parameter a user model object. So let's do user model and just call it user, I guess. And then we're going to do some more things in the code, um, but for right now, that should be okay. And I'm just going to put a breakpoint right here so we can test it in the future. So let's go back to our view now that we have our uh, action in our controller, our add users action. So we already put that the method's going to be post, so that's fine. And here we're going to put the path to get to that action. So the first one, or the first part of the path is going to be home, because it's the home controller, and then add users. And at the very top, I want to define the kind of model that we're going to use throughout this Razor page. So I can do the at sign model, and then define which model we're actually using. So first thing we have to do is we need to start it with name of our whole solution, so EF demo, and then dot models, and then dot user model. And this tells this whole page what kind of model to expect to use throughout it. So in the input, we can add an attribute called ASP-4, and this is going to be email. And you can see a telesense came up because it knows email is an attribute of the user model. So next one's name, so we can do the same thing, ASP4, and then name. And then lastly, ASP4, and then username. So now I'm going to rebuild it and run it, and I'm just going to put in some stuff and see if that breakpoint gets caught. And then we can look at the model and make sure that all of the data I put is in that past object into our controller. Okay, so I think this will work because that's a valid email address because it has that. Uh, so let's go ahead and submit. Okay, so something I messed up in the action, we actually have to put an opening slash, forward slash here. And now if I run it, okay, and we add that information again, and I'll hit submit, we can see that this breakpoint was reached. And then if we hover over user and we expand this, you can see that email is test at gmail.com name is Joe and username is Doe as I put it. Cool, so now our form works and the last thing we want to do is we want to use EF Core to put it into our SQLite database which is super easy and that's this is what makes uh, Entity Framework Core so powerful. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a using statement and we're going to say our variable DB which is going to equal a new and then if you remember in the last video we made this demo context where is it actually? Right there. I couldn't find it for some reason. So we made this demo context, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new demo context. And we're going to use it throughout this using statement. And then we're going to say db.add our user object. And then the last thing we want to do is db.save changes. If we don't run this, it will never actually save it to the database and commit those changes. So be sure to do that. So I'm, instead, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here instead of at the front. And let's do this again. Uh, put that basic information in our form, hit submit, and see if it ever made it into our database. Um, just to make sure, I will go back to our database, refresh, 
and look nothing's there as of yet so let's bring it over okay and instead of doe I just put j doe I guess is a better username maybe like 21 and then put a number in there so let's hit submit and you can see we made it all the way here which means it added it uh, and then it saved our changes so let's see if it actually did that let's refresh and here it is and you can see that I gave it an ID even though we didn't actually add an ID because we hover over this uh, ID is one and that's because we have that auto increment and it knows so let's go ahead and add just a second one just to just to do it so I continue um, and let's change this a bit uh, let's call this Mike M dog 32 so let's submit that that was pretty quick and then let's refresh and there we go two uh, Mike M dog 32 and then our email if we expand this test at gmail.com because I didn't change it um, I could have and uh, yeah so here we go entity framework is now see how simple it is we didn't have to write any SQL notice we didn't have to say insert into users uh, these columns and then these values right we didn't have to do that so that is how you can insert into a database with entity framework in our case a SQLite database and in the next video I think we're going to do reading from so stay tuned for that thanks for watching I hope to see you there